Hello and welcome. Uh, this video will re review the information you need to complete activity 4-2. I highly recommend that you watch the video covering the chapter reading, chapter 4 videos, both part 1 and part 2. Uh, that video re will review the information you need to complete questions 1 through 10 successfully. Uh, in, that, in those questions 1 through 10, you'll be using the Z distribution to compute a 95% confidence interval. For questions 11 through 20, you're going to be working with a T distribution. You're going to be working with a Z distribution for questions 1 through 10. And, and when you're working with a T distribution, something slightly changes when you are uh, computing the 95% confidence interval. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. When you're working with the margin of error to compute the 95% confidence interval, you're going to be using the uh, error term, which is right there. But you're also going to be using, again, the factor that expands the margin of error from the 68%, which is what you get if you just use the SEM, the 68% margin of error. What you want is a 95, so you need to multiply this times a factor that will increase that to the 95% confidence interval. Now, as you know, when you're doing, uh, when you're working with the Z distribution, that factor is always 1.96 because the Z distribution is constant. It doesn't change its shape based on sample size. That's not true of the T distribution. The T distribution does change its shape based on sample size, so that means the factor that you need to use to compute this margin of error is going to vary based on sample size. So you'll need to look this value up in Appendix B. And you, again, you can find it. It's the same appendices that you've used in the previous uh, activity. You need to look up this in Appendix B. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you use the two-tailed table. Appendix B, there's going to be two tables. You want to make sure you're using the two-tailed table. You're looking under the alpha 0.05, and you're going to look up the, in the row for the DF, which is N minus 1, the sample size minus 1. So I'll show you um, what I mean here. Here is the table in Appendix B. I notice I'm using the two-tailed probabilities table. Let's just say that our sample size was 35. We would try and find the DF of, 30, of 35. Our DF is, or excuse me, our sample size is 35. So we find 35, but our DF is, is N minus 1. So it's 34. And then you'd come over and you'd see that under the alpha 0.05 across from 34, the value is 2.0322. So that is the value that you'll need to uh, multiply the SEM by in order to find the margin of error. I think that's all the information you'll need to complete uh, activity 4.2. That is, if you understand the information that's in the video uh, that reviews part two of the chapter reading. 